Hi, everybody. I'm Ruth Sternberg. I am a coach uh, in Rochester, New York, but I work nationally with job seekers, helping them with their strategy and all their materials. And I like to do these sessions called Move Forward because I am trying to help people in their careers with various, various things. And so I've, I've invited Rebecca Metz uh, to talk to us about the online digital presence. And I'm going to let Rebecca introduce herself a little more formally. Take it away. Hey everybody, it's a real delight to meet all of you. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, my name is, as Ruth shared, my name is Rebecca Metz and my company is webpagesthatsell.com. Um, I am a website designer, developer and everything in between. Um, my goal and my reason for doing what I do is to get another person, get my clients amazingness and gifts out into the world in a way that others can understand and respond and utilize them. Um, I absolutely love to support and teach. I'm a born teacher and I love to work with all of my clients too so that they know what they're doing with all this all this social media, digital website, all of that whole bundle of what um, online marketing really is. Now, I typically work with entrepreneurs, um, but Ruth had invited me here today to talk about how you as a career searcher can use online digital um, marketing to support your career endeavors. And so I'm curious, I've got a couple of questions. I'd like to get to know you all a little bit better. Um, can you give me an idea um, how you would describe your current career career status. Um, for example, are you currently seeking employment? Are you employed but looking for something better? Are you employed but keeping your options open? Are you a gig worker? Meaning like, are you an Uber driver or a musician or a personal shopper or something like that? Or are you an entrepreneur? And maybe why don't, I'll just go ahead and call on people's names as I see them in the room here and um, love to hear what where you are at in your current career. Um, Jody, would you like to begin? Yes, thanks, Rebecca. I'm currently in search mode. I uh, lost a full-time job back in 2020, and I've recently had two contract uh, assignments. The first was through a staffing agency, the second of which was the first time I actually worked for myself, if you will. Um, someone came to me, I wrote a contract um, for that position and I'm in search of my next opportunity and I'm open to uh, a job for an organization or a contract at this point. Okay, Thanks. so you're kind of a combination between looking for, currently looking for employment and a gig worker. And maybe a little entrepreneurial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are they, uh, oh, I've heard the term COVIDpreneur. Or a portfolio worker, where you do more than one thing. Portfolio worker, yeah. Yeah, a COVIDpreneur is a new term. Uh, people that have been forced into entrepreneurialism because of COVID. Uh, well, it's a delight to meet you, Jody. Thank you. Um, how about you, Sarah? Yes, hi. Um, hi. So I am unemployed. Um, I, I resigned at my, my job earlier this spring. Um, as a marketing director. And I'm kind of taking, took the time to, to figure out where I wanted to transition my career into next. Um, so right now I'm full-time searching for internal communications and employer branding roles. Now, are you looking for a full-time position or are you also um, thinking about converting into more contract-based or more entrepreneurial-based? Um, ideally a full-time position, um, but I'm open to anything. Sure, just something to kind of keep keep you moving, but keep, yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 good on you for, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, you know, that took a lot of guts for you to resign from a position and to, to just say, okay, you know what, I've got one life to live here and I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. Um, that was, that was really gutsy. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's been a long process. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and sometimes you have to, I mean, the, we, we regret what we didn't do. You know, that's really at the end of the day, you know, that's the, we regret what we, you know, 
letting the golden handcuffs hold us down sometimes keeps us from living our full potential. So good on you. And um, absolutely, I wish you the best on that. Um, that's that's great. Um, Pilar, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. Um, I, I switched jobs very recently in March. Um, but what I'm trying to do right now is like stay within this job and um on the side i'm I, I have like my um entrepreneurship that i'm starting and i want to make sure that my website is like gonna have the presence that i want to capture uh customers mm -hmm. excellent okay so tell me more about your entrepreneurial um i started last year because of COVID. <laughs> Um, I started looking into, yeah, well, I still had a job, but I, I was, I got curious about this other thing, uh, voiceover. So I started, I started with a coaching program and a marketing program and all that, but I really want to nail it in my website because that's one of the things that you have to share the most when, when offering your voiceover services. Yeah, that's great. By the way, I do have a you know, we're going to be, we're not going to be diving too much into entrepreneurial websites today. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have a, if you go to, I'll put it in the chat window here. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have a free guide. And anyone is welcome to this. Let me put it in. I have a free guide here. It's called the five reasons why your website is not making or is losing sales that you might not even know about. There we go. Okay. I'll grab that put that in the chat that you can check out if you would like. That might help you with Thank that. Thank you. You're welcome. And Ray, what's uh, wh where would you describe yourself? Uh, thanks for having me. First of all, I'm I'm sort of driving and going to an interview now, so that's that's why I can't have my video on, which is unfortunate, but just the reality of what it is. I'm currently I like the term portfolio career. That really fits me well. I came up through the ranks in software development, graduated with a master's degree in computer science from RIT, and I've been in management ever since. And currently, I have sort of the entrepreneurial style. I started my own company with some, some things that I've been doing along the gig economy lines and then COVID hit and everything is kind of like come to a, uh, everything's on pause and I don't know when it'll come unpaused. So in the meantime, I am currently interviewing for high tech positions in the sciences, physics in particular. And there's two companies that are probably my top target companies, which is Lamb Research Corporation and MKS Instruments in Rochester, who make stuff for Lamb Research Corporation. So I'm interviewing them both and finding out facts from one that I can use during an interview with the other. And that seems to be going pretty well. They are creating a position for me, hopefully, as a product owner, which is a director level position over at MKS. So I'm trying to find the right balance between staying in touch, but not pestering them while they create the position and gather the requirements, then I probably will try to touch base once a week and just see how things are going. Uh, and you know, the gig economy, I also do consulting nights and weekends on the side, and those are sometimes very lucrative, but it might just be a one day, one shot thing. So, Right, does it give you that consistent uh, income? What's that? It, are you saying that it doesn't give you that consistent income, you can't really count on it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's unpredictable and uh, it's great when it happens. And so, yeah, I have to, when I get the money in, I also have to, to divide it in thirds. One third goes into my company, one third gets set aside for taxes, and one third I get to pay myself. So that's sort of what I've been doing. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting how we all have found ourselves in lots of new new roles, you know, like lots of multiple roles and trying to keep the income consistent, but also, you know, being being conscientious of, you know, trying to get into that more regular consistent income, but trying different things because, you know, 
sometimes you just, you, you, it doesn't, what you think it should look like, it doesn't look like anymore. So you have to figure out what that looks like. And that's a very limbo feeling and very uncomfortable. So, so, you know, good on you guys for taking these different initiatives to create your life and to create a life that you are excited about. And, you know, I hope, hopefully, um, during this session, I can show you some ways to showcase yourself so that you more opportunities come to you and you're keeping lots of fishing lines, if you will, out and about in the job market. Um, I have a few more questions, but what I was hoping that we could we could cover today is I was going to show you some examples of ways that people are using digital marketing to um, to to get to that next position um, or using digital marketing to create more opportunities for themselves, whether it be more gigs or whether it's a full time employment or just something in between until the next opportunity shows up. Um, the um, so. I, I have a few more questions here and just you can just like yes, no, like so if it's the answer is yes, raise your hand okay. So um, let's see. The next question is, is, do you have a LinkedIn profile? Yes. Yep. Okay. So everybody has a LinkedIn profile. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to actually look at some. Now, Ruth, the ones that you sent me, did you create those? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we're going to take a look at some really positive um, LinkedIn profiles. And I'm going to share what I like, and then I'm going to ask Ruth to kind of point out the things that she really likes about them. Um, all right, uh, do you have, um, oh, we got some more people. I'm gonna go ahead and admit everybody, okay? There, Ruth. Um, so the next question I have is, who has a Facebook profile? Okay, so looks like, uh, Ray, do you have one as well? I do not, I'm not really big on Facebook. Okay. How about you, Kim? Welcome. And do you have a Facebook profile? I do, but um, the only reason my business is on there is because it's expected to be on there. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really get much of anything out of it. All right. Who has an Instagram profile? Awesome. Okay. Um, I have I have three actually. <laughs> three. That's awesome. Woo! <laughs> uh, how about uh, Pinterest? All right. Awesome. All right. And then, uh, how about uh, just who has a website or an online resume? Nice. Ray does. Ray does. Okay. So uh, let's let's go ahead and take a look. Now, my, my goal today is more just for you to get some ideas. You know, let's, because we're, you know, even me, like as a marketer, like I look at my website, I go to other, like I go to like workshops and stuff like that, marketing workshops, and I learn things all the time. And it's like, oh, you know, or, or I, I hear something again. It's like, yeah, I knew that that was important. I should do that. Like, and so it just kind of, you can't do everything all at once. And we're always constantly refining them. So hopefully you walk away with a few ideas of how you could use these different social media profiles and online websites and online resumes as a, um, you know, a, to, to help you with your opportunities, you know, and create clarity. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some LinkedIn profiles and actually Ruth sent them to me. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them up. I've got, I'm going to share my screen. And um, so Ruth, could you tell us about um, Samuel Lewis? So, um, so Sam is an engineer um, and he is in an area of engineering where he he's trained as a mechanical engineer, but he he also became a welding engineer through his work, and he was unemployed last year and was trying to find a position that would 
allow him to help with how products are constructed and in, in the materials joining space and the welding space. So yeah, so what I did with his profile was I wanted to show, first of all, in the banner photo, I wanted to show something that was that that was suggested welding and manufacturing. Um, I, and I and with his headline, I wanted to show what he who he is, but what he does and what he offers. And in talking to him, he told me that he actually said to me, I, I tell people that I'm a mechanical engineer who speaks welding and I'm like, oh my God, that's what putting it's perfect. That in yeah, sometimes that discussion brings up a lot of things like that, you know? And so I noticed that you also have a lot of like, uh, I can see keywords and key yeah. phrases. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he is, he is a PMP and we wanted to make sure people saw that and recruiters could find that. And I also wanted to let people know that he wants, that he works with quality stuff. It's manufacturing, so we use that keyword. And also he, ha he has worked internationally, so we wanted to make sure. And materials joining is a phrase that often um, is used instead of welding because it's it. bigger than welding. So um, yeah. And so when it came down to his about section, um, I really wanted to help explain who he is, not just what he does. And a lot of people use their about section to be like, it's their resume, but no. Um, really, it should, it should talk about what, how you do what you do and why you do it um, and what, what they're getting if they hire you. He made a video of himself and put it up here. So I suggested it. I'm like, why don't you do a video talking about how you do your, um, yeah. And I kind of rewrote his experience a little bit to make it a little more conversational, but yeah. So that's what I did because you know, the, the algorithm is your headline and your about section are the two biggest things on your LinkedIn profile and recruiters are constantly looking for candidates in different areas. So you want to make sure that your advertisement is up, you know? So let's take a look at uh, Darina. Mm -hmm. So same thing, really. Um, Darina has been a nurse her whole career, but she's in administration, but she's looking to move up even higher in administration. So I wanted her banner to show medical, but also not just the on the floor with patients, but sort of the administrative part. Banners can be hard, you know, <laughs> but I was luckily I, I happened upon this photo and I'm like, oh, great. Um, so once again, I telegraphed in her headline who she is and what she delivers. You know, I was very deliberate about what I said there because in what she does, um, transforming systems is really big and patient outcomes are huge and profitability is huge in the medical field, which is something disappointing to learn, but it is true. Um, and we all, I also wanted the person reading it to know that she's, um, she's very adaptable and very, you know, it's, it's a stressful, it's a very stressful field. So yeah, and her about section again is about her. Yep, there we go. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and then wait. then having these these um, little emojis and stuff like that to to dial in, so people yeah. can see this and call attention. I like to, to use that. yeah, I like to use sections because they're easy to read mm -hmm. instead of just a giant paragraph. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. Now, um, for the folks, have you worked with the folks that are on this call as far as for their LinkedIn profile? No, I have not. I am not working directly. With um, I'm, wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering if it would be worth our while and I'm totally putting you on the spot on this and I'm putting everybody on the spot on this. Is anybody interested in having a quick, you know, three point three to five point, um, um, suggestion for, from Ruth as far as their LinkedIn profiles? Is that something you're open to doing, Ruth? Sure, I can do it real quick. Um, does anybody, let's, we'll take, we'll take, we'll take one volunteer. Who would like to, to have that? Anyone? I'd be interested in having a review of my LinkedIn profile. Now, just a very quick, are we going to do a Facebook too? 
Um, we'll talk about Facebook in just yeah. a second, but Kim, yeah. Kim, do you want to, you want to have yours? Okay. So this is a good, um, this is a really good opportunity. So Kim, I'm going to do Kim's. Okay. But she raised her hand first. So, um, I think she did at least. Kim Pandina, that's her. There we go. Okay. I'm going to view your full profile. Is this, do we got, do, is this you? That's me. All right, great. All right, take it away, Ruth. And it's not pretty. <laughs> All right, well, Kim. You're, you're in good company, man. Ruth is the master at this. Okay, so the first thing I'm just going to say is um, your photo's okay, but it, you, we can't really see your face very well. Um, and so I think that one of the big one of the big things that it go, is going on with you because you do more than one thing is having a, a an identity for your profile. Um, I, I, sometimes if you're an entrepreneur, you have to do things a little differently and you have to, you have to decide like, what am I trying to say about myself? Who do I want to actually find this profile and what do I want to be the result of them finding it? So I know you do accounting. So, you know, I would be inclined to say, pick something you want to focus on here. Are, is, are you an accounting professional or are you doing jewelry or is there an umbrella description of what you do that encompasses both of those things yeah that's what i'm trying to figure out yeah uh, i it's have, hard the, I have the company i have the company page and i kind of need to pull the company away from my personal profile well right right part of it and put it exactly. under underwear but not get sure you to do that but so that's the first thing i i notice i also would find a banner that something that describes you um that is nice to look at and eye catching and, and sort of at it's like your, your billboard for yourself and what your brand is about, what you're all about. Yeah, Pixabay is great and Unsplash and Canva. Those are really great sources. Um, I also would have a headline that not only um, is focused, but also has more in it than that, where, you know, when you're in, when you're running a business, you, you always want to be able to tell the person reading it that you know what it is that they're trying to find and you can offer it to them. What, what's the thing they're really buying, right? I, I like, I do resume services and, and career coaching stuff, right? So I'm not selling resumes. I'm selling job security or self-confidence or, you know what I mean? So you have to find that thing that really is about what you're doing. And then that's your headline should talk about that. Um, so your about section doesn't really have anything in it. Um, you could go, oh my God, this is a great playground for you, Kim. I mean, you could talk about yourself and how you got into whatever it is your profile is about. You could talk about what your values and philosophy are about what you do. And really, you could have a really good time with your about section. Um, letting people really know what you're all about and why you're doing what you're doing and what you're doing. You know, because really that's what, if you guys are familiar with Simon Sinek, you know, he, 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 he made famous the idea that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And um, that's a really great place for you to talk about that is in your about section. And then um, you should decide what you want your experience section to really say about you. Like you're not out there looking for a job, you're out there looking for clients, right? So you, you want to make sure that what you have in here gives them information about what what you what your experience has been and how you've helped people you know what the results of that have been so yeah it's kind of different when you're an entrepreneur but it all starts with why are why are you doing this who are you serving why are you serving them etc which is great because i have to tell you that's kind of what rebecca does when you work, when you work with her on her on, on website services she takes you through your whole reason for being in business. It's a very valuable exercise. So those are my quick takeaways. So here is, um, Kim, do you, did you get some good um, ideas for your LinkedIn profile? Yeah, I, I really just need to extract the um, Pandaware part of it from the personal profile and um, try to figure out how when people look up Pandaware and they look at me, they're just going to see this split and it's, it, it's yeah. going to be weird. So I got to keep some of the jewelry stuff in the profile, but. 
<coughs> I need to focus more on the accounting side. And I wasn't sure the best way to do it because not all the people that I work for, am I allowed to name who am I'm working for? Not well, everyone. You don't have to, you don't happens. necessarily have to do that. I mean, you're just, but anyway. Yeah, I would, I would say if your goal is to get, if your goal is to get a job with your, um, with your LinkedIn profile, like that's its purpose, then focus completely on the types of jobs that are the type of job that or the experience and the value that you bring to the accounting world. And you could also create a, you know, um, part of about who you are is about your ability to create a business and your entrepreneurialism. That's a value that a, a company can, you know, like learn from you and, and recruiters are like, wow, she's really got, you know, she's very multifaceted and she's got experience that she's even applied to her own business. Um, a question for you all. Um, okay, so I wanted to cover, I wanted to take a look, quick look at um, Facebook as well. And I'm going to show you an example of mine. But before I move on, um, what I would like to encourage you guys to do is um, if you are feeling like your LinkedIn profile could use something, talk to Ruth about it. She offers complimentary sessions where you can talk about, you know, the possibility of her work um, creating a LinkedIn profile for you, um, where she pulls all that out for you. Um, and if you're also looking, um, I wanted to bring your attention. Um, if you guys have not signed up for this, this is a tough thing to do. Uncovering your most valuable assets. Ruth has put together this guide, Uncovering Your Most Valuable Assets. She will send you this free guide if you just put your name and your email in there. Um, this guide will kind of help walk you through extracting all that because that's the here's the this is what we say in um, the marketing world it's that the medicine cannot read the label on its own bottle. So you are the medicine. But for you to be able to understand how to how you need to label your bottle so that people understand what it is that you offer, it can be very challenging. And it's challenging to me as well. And I do this all the time. It's very challenging to do this for yourself. Um, I don't know if anybody here has ever tried to cut their own hair. Um, I know I have and have failed miserably. Um, and that is the same thing as far as like trying to get somebody else to do these sorts of things for you is super helpful. So check this out. You go to her website at confidentcareercoach.com and it's, you know, it's on the homepage. You scroll down a little bit and you'll find it. And that's something that you may consider. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to um, my website. Now, this is my personal profile and I'll always do something personal in my banner and my personal profile, but I also make sure that people know what I am, as well as give them a call to action. You know, the big thing that is important to me is that I need people to, first of all, I need them to see my work. If they can see my work, then they know um, that, you know, then, then that's like a big hurdle for me. Because once they see my work, they're like, oh, yeah. You know, they fall in love with the websites that I've created and they want to work with me. You could do a port, you could create a portfolio for yourself. Uh, we'll talk about creating an online, um, online pro, um, profile as well, like a website as well for your business, um, for your job search. But, um, you know, that's, this is the call to action. I want them to know how I can support them. My next goal is to get them on a phone call with me. You know, if somebody can get on, if I can get on a phone call with somebody, we can decide whether or not I can support them and we can have a, we can decide if we're a good match. And if we are a good match, well, that's fantastic because then I get to work with somebody I really like and somebody gets to um, be able to utilize my services. So it's, it's great. So I encourage you on your everywhere you are, and I'm going to also show you another example too, but everywhere you are digitally, what is it that you want people to do? How can you get them excited about who you are and, and how can you keep, and I always say that it's like a fishing line as we're, as you're fishing, you know, you want, you need to put multiple lines in the water in order to catch lots of fish. And that's what we're doing. So on my Facebook 
profile. I keep my Facebook profile very personal. You know, these are the things that I'm important. It's important to me, but I also have a Facebook business page. And I, even though you may be looking for a position, remember you are a, you as an individual, you're like your own business. You are going to, if you're looking for a job, think of it as a business, create a business profile, you know, accounting, uh, you know, uh, accounting software, you know, um, you know, what, what are accounting professional or um, I'm trying to think of what everybody's positions were, but, um, you know, put that out there as a business. And so I'm going to, now I am a business, but I'm just going to go ahead. I can put here, click here to visit my business page at, this is something that you can put in into the intro and I'll show you how I did that. Um, I'm going to go to edit profile. Um, and then where it says customize your intro, edit. And then I typed this out and it pulled it in. This is one of the things that Facebook will let you pull in um, as a position. So click here to visit my business page. It'll say, what's your position? It, you just type that out and it'll work. Um, all right, so when you go to my business page, now I have something more specific you know, um, some, a call to action. This is very much more business oriented. And I have my picture. I have my picture everywhere because I want people to get to know me and experience, you know, just feel like they've, they're getting to know me. So, um, you know, and this, I keep much more professional, you know, as far as the things that we're doing, you know, I in, um, incorporate my blog articles. Um, you know, we, I also incorporate my brand, but you know, that's, that's another layer. So, Let's go back to, let's go back. So a little bit on Facebook. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is another place where you can, you know, we talked about wanting to um, put lots of lines in. Another place that you could consider, you can consider doing that is your email. Um, I have any time I write an email and you have, I have this at, I have this email signature. Um, I have all of my contact information. Remember, everywhere you go, you want to put your contact information because that might be the one touch that they're like, I got to talk to Pilar. I got to talk to Sarah. What is their number? What is their email address? And you want them to be able to quickly find it. Um, this little button here actually um, gets connected to a online calendar that might be something that you might in, be interested in. Um, this is also this is a, a connection to my lead magnet. You know what I had showed you earlier, where like Ruth has a free guide and I have a free guide, um, and that's not necessarily so important for a job seeker, but for an entrepreneur, it's very important. Um, now this tool that I used is called Wise Stamp, and Wise Stamp is free. Um, I paid extra for some of like the, you know, be able to put my signature and animation, but um, you know, this is, you can create a very nice signature with your picture and it's completely free and it'll connect. And so every time you send out an email, you'll be able to, to add it. All right, great, thank you. All right, so let's see. Um, let's see. Um, so Ruth, you had a question for me. You said, I think Facebook is a bit more flexible. Can you telegraph multiple entities? Can you uh, expand on that a little bit more? No, I was just commenting. Um, oh. I think on your personal page, Facebook is not a business platform. It's um, first and foremost, a personal platform. And so I think on your personal page, you definitely can be who you want to be. Much. It's not like... LinkedIn is a business platform, right? You're yeah. talking about your profession, but you can do a lot of things on um, on Facebook, right? You, you don't have yeah. to just be a thing you, or a, whatever it is you are. You can be a multifaceted person doing different things and you can have 
talking about your voiceover work talking about your jewelry yeah, yeah, talking yeah. About, and you know and people are looking at your facebook job you know when you're searching for a job people are looking at your facebook profiles they are looking at your linkedin profiles your instagram That's true. Who is this person they're doing that because it's important first of all they're doing it because it's important to them that they're bringing in people that they think will be a good fit and also, it's important to you to be able to search out that company's LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, you know, leadership's profiles as much as you can, because it's important for you to know if this is going to be a good match and these are the type of people you want to hang out with. This gives you some indication. Obviously, it's all superficial, but um, it gives you some indication. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples now about um, some actual career sites that we put together. Now, these these two, these two sites that I'm going to show you here, these are actually students, and we created a very like quick and easy way for us to have their, um, for us to be able to showcase these students um, so that they have opportunities for jobs once they get to that point in their, in their cur curriculum that they're out starting to look. One thing I'd like to point out to you, notice Notice the professional photo. Now, in this case, what we did for these students is we had a professional photo day. And so the students came in, we got their picture, and then they got these photos as part of their, you know, part of student services. But you can absolutely find deals where you can get a professional photo. I can't emphasize enough how important a professional photo is. It will cost you some money. But it is like when you show up to an interview, you're going to wear your best, you're going to look your best, you're going to have your hair nice, you're going to be, you know, in a, you know, professional attire, and you spend and well groomed, um, you're, you spend money doing that. And like, you know, we want to be able to show up, I encourage all entrepreneurs to have a very professional photo for their website because it is like it's the first stage of that screening process. It's the first stage of your um, of your you know interviewing process and job finding process. So please always get a professional photo taken. Um, in this case, though, this is one level of while this per you can add to your portfolio to this like in this case this person has he's got a professional photo he's got a little bit about who he is you, know, you can click to learn more he's got here is his certifications and trainings you know this is important this is his techniques and approach here you can connect with him on social media this is where you can contact him these are all and then you know of course if you're just you know going to those specific um, in, you know, pieces of information, you can also click around. But this will show Clay as he he's still a student, but this shows Clay as the as a professional, it gives it gives that one level, like one extra level of, oh, this person actually has a website. Oh, that's cool. Let's get to know this person. And you can, you know, that you get, once again, it's another fish line in the, in the, um, in, you know, as you fish, here's another fish for an opportunity, right? Um, here is another example, you know, nice, nice picture, nice smile, you know, and, you know, very nice, warm introduction, you know, get in touch with them. Here's another picture. Here's his techniques. We've got um, advanced certifications. Now he also, um, created a QR code, which is another fun way of connecting with people as well. These you can make for free. So, um, you know, just do a Google search on free QR code generator, and you can put that, if you have business card, resume, that sort of thing, put your QR code on it. So I have a question, I guess um, my, my questions for you is, you know, we've kind of looked at some things. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Um, we've all looked at some things here. Um, we've got some new folks that came on. What, what ideas, what's one idea that you're gonna take away to help you with your career endeavors? And I'll just go ahead and go around the, the, the room here. Um, Jody, would you mind sharing? Uh, I'm going to take another look at my LinkedIn 
profile. I up updated it about oh, six months ago. So see what changes I want to make. Uh, changing some keywords, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll be revisiting it. Jody, do you find that you have difficulty with um, with pulling your transferable skills and showcasing what it is that the value or the label that you're going to put on your medicine bottle? Um, I have a lot of them, so it may be mm -hmm. about focusing. Okay. Them. Yeah, five. Rem and remember, yes, a lot of times we have so many things. We do not want people to feel like they're drinking from a fire hose. So anytime you have a lot of information and we want to do that, like I do that, I try to do that too. And then I have to remind myself, no, 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 pull it back. So um, like think of your think of your top three to five specifically for the position, the ones that are most important for the position. And those are the ones that you concentrate on. Sure, share the other ones, but share it in a more like secondary page or, you know, something that something that really catches their attention that makes them want to get to know you more. Um, I would also encourage you to think of this as like, for example, dating, you know, when you first go on a, a coffee date with somebody that you're interested in, you don't really tell them your whole life story. You don't tell them all of your accomplishments. You don't tell them everything that you've done. You have a couple of things that are really key that, you know, are really important to you that you share or, you know, show yourself in a good light. And then it's like, oh yeah, I would, I would really like to go on a second date with you. You know, I'd like to know more. So think of concentrate on three to five that would be most pertinent to your position that you can really shine on. Great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I hope that was helpful. Um, Sarah. Yeah. Um, so I have um, a personal website that's kind of just um, an online resume yeah, um, right now. So I, I really want to figure out, you know, how to make it work harder for me to kind of show, you know, what I can deliver and, you know, to show more about me and then be able to use that across all my platforms. Excellent. Yeah. And put that into your, put your website into your email signature, put it into your business card. If you have a create a business card, put it on your resume, put it on. And then um, I think you were the one that had mentioned the QR. Oh, maybe it was um, uh, Pilar, um, QR code. Um, yeah, that's somebody, a great idea. Somebody said um, Pilar codes were dead. They were almost dead. This is what's so fascinating to me. Like as a marketer, like QR codes were totally like, they never had a purpose. And they were just like, so on the way out. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and everybody's using them again. And they're, and it's super helpful. It's like, okay, we got a technology that- Yeah, we they're on menu, the menus at the restaurants are all QR yep, codes. They're on menus, they're, they're, Everywhere. Yeah, and here's Sarah. I would I would say to you um, to try to find different things that you can do with your various platforms, because um, LinkedIn for job seekers particularly tends to be kind of your sort of like your website. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's got a lot of elements that you should be really using. Use every part that you possibly can of the profile. There's a lot of opportunity there to showcase yourself. So then you could ask yourself, okay that's on my LinkedIn already. And I can put that on my signature line or wherever I want, but what can I do on my website that I can't do on my LinkedIn profile? That way it's not like you're, it's not like you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again, mm -hmm. but you're trying to add more value with this other thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Pilar, what is, uh, what is your big takeaway from today? Um, I actually don't have a personal website and I do have a, like a Facebook, but it's also just like for personal use. So I think that it's a great idea to actually have like my personal website and connect it to like a personal and professional uh, Facebook. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And get more work for both. Mm hmm. Yeah, so people can see how multifaceted you are. Excellent. How about you, Kim? I think the big thing for me is um, LinkedIn initially was just, I used it because I was working full time um, in my field in accounting, but that has changed. And I was using it to let people know my business actually exists because 
people have this opinion of people that do craft shows as retired people that are just doing things for side money so they can go on vacation. Um, jewelry is one of those arts that is not taken. Um, in the same vein is if somebody is a professional painter or a professional speaker, it's just treated very differently. Mm -hmm, yeah. So my LinkedIn was initially out there to just prove that I am professional and I do what I do, hence the image behind me. Um, I had that done by a professional photographer of my jewelry. I feel like um, certain platforms are more useful for certain things. Yeah, that's like, why I'm on LinkedIn and Pinterest. Yeah, I feel like um, Instagram is great for visuals. Yeah. Instagram and Pinterest. Yep. And I like, I'm also a wedding officiant and I don't have anything on Facebook or on LinkedIn about that. To me, that's more of a Facebook, Instagram kind of a thing. Like where, where is your audience? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Like brides, they're all on Instagram and <laughs> Pinterest, right? Yeah. So LinkedIn is not a place people look for those services. So that's what the, you know what I mean? That's why I was suggesting the accounting part of your life is better for LinkedIn probably. Cause that is where businesses look to find those professionals. So. Yeah, yeah. I was, in, um, this is going back a few years on um, the LinkedIn groups were great and they were working well. And then they kind of died off during COVID. Yeah, we only so. have so many hours in the day, and so yeah, um, things are always changing on LinkedIn. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, I didn't realize how quickly LinkedIn was was changing. I was really enjoying the groups, and it's kind of sad to see them go. And the Facebook groups just nowhere near have the the punch and the authenticity the LinkedIn groups did. At least when someone said they did something there, there was an eighty five percent chance they actually did it on Facebook. I think it's about twenty five, <laughs> by what I've seen. People that call themselves experts in the field. You've been doing this for six months. You're not an expert in any field in six months. Sorry. <laughs> Just what I Thanks. run into. Thanks so much, Kim. Yep. How about you, Ray? What was your big takeaway for today? Well, thank you so much for the presentation. It's been a, a great meeting. I, I try to take walks during my meetings so that I get some exercise. I'm doing that now. My biggest takeaway, I think, was the comment when you want to create the label so that somebody knows. I, I just envisioned myself at CVS or Wegmans looking for nasal decongestant and seeing a box that's just white and has the word medicine on it. I have no idea what that is. Yep. No idea what it will do. No idea why, why I would want it. So I think that's really... One of my struggles with LinkedIn is I've, I've done so many things in my 27 year career. I can do any, really any job in the computer science IT space, but having one LinkedIn profile that mentions the primary targets that I have without trying to list all 15 of them is usually where I struggle. So you know, what do I put on LinkedIn? It used to be really long and then I noticed I started to keep a track of LinkedIn profiles that I liked and then started reviewing them. And the ones I liked the best were the ones that were the shortest. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably what I'm going to try. And then you know, really try to come up with that one label for my medicine bottle. Awesome. Probably my takeaway. Nice work. Now, do you have Ruth Sky, the um, transferable skills? I do not, but I, I'm pretty well in touch with my transferable skills, functional skills, skills with people, data, and things. Okay. From the What Colors Your Parachute exercise. Love that. I love that book. Thank you so much, Ray. How sure. about you? How about you, Jocelyn? What did um, What was your big takeaway from today? Hi. Um, well, basically, um, the main takeaway was going to where your audience is. Um, in in my well, I'm very active on LinkedIn, but recently I've been actually um, headhunted uh, on Facebook for some reason. And on Facebook, I'm I'm very anonymous sort of say, you cannot really see my face, you cannot really see um, my posts, but this is what's happening now. So maybe um, um, 
maybe I, what I'm what I'm thinking now is that I could possibly um, try to enhance uh, my my um, marketable skills in in a business on a business business Facebook page um, in order to in order to to try to attract um, more uh, more of a younger um audience uh shall i say um since i do uh, well my my main uh focus is still on it and and technology so so yeah excellent excellent thank you so much jocelyn how about you jacqueline what was your biggest takeaway um hello everyone my biggest takeaway is I hope, are you recording this? Is it going to be available to us? Because I came in late. I had a funeral. I had a relative pass away. I had to. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, Ruth, it did record this. And it will be available to us. I'm hoping yes. soon. I have a bunch of these that I need to post. So be patient. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, my biggest takeaway is I'm new to social media, so um, I'm going to hopefully get in touch with you, Ruth. So um, I'm to be able to um, develop my LinkedIn page. Sure. I'm going back into possibly the, the workforce, but I do have a business. Um, so maybe you'll be able to help me. And about the uh, email signature with the Y stamp. I thought that was very helpful. Yeah, I love I love the fact that yours is dynamic, Rebecca. Yeah. Write your name. I'm like, oh, oh. I had to pay extra for that though. I was, that was kind I know, of- I know, I like, know. Oh, should I do it? I don't know. You know, it's on a, on a day that I'm like, yeah, totally do it. <laughs> no, I wonder if that was a good decision, but I like it. Um, it's fun, yeah. Well, folks, uh, thank you, Ruth. Thank you so much for having me on today's um, Meet and Move Forward meeting. I really enjoyed meeting all of you. Um, and I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. And, um, you know, stop by my website if you would like to connect on that. And um, thank you.